two kids, 17 years old, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, decided to draw a comic book. Action Comics number one is one of our greatest cultural ruins because it's the oldest superhero comic. These two kids created an industry. They created the comic book business. This is the DC Library Archives. Uh, it's actually the hardest room to get into all of DC because we keep all of our original comic books here. We have bound comic books that go all the way back to 1938, and we have loose comics that cover our entire history. Uh, inside the case, we have some of the rarest and most valuable comics or most important comics DC ever produced or have ever been produced in comic book form. Okay, this is it. Action Comics number one, probably the most famous cover in comic book history. This is the birthplace of the entire genre of superheroes. Without Superman, there are no superheroes. That was the beginning of superheroes in America. That was the beginning of superheroes in the world. Was it important? Nah, was it important? It was about this guy in a red and blue outfit, and he jumped over tall buildings in a single bound, and it was just silly. There was no way that Siegel, Schuster, or any of the people at DC had any idea that they were creating something that people would see in movies and radio and television for years to come. Every character in the superhero universe owes a little bit of their DNA to that man right there. It should also be noted that this is a 1940s car. They're a lot heavier than a Volkswagen Bug. They were 200,000 copies printed originally. They took a poll of the newsstands in New York and some of the other major cities, and what they told them was all the kids were asking for that Superman comic. And within three months, they sold over a million copies of that comic book. A million copies. The idea that someone could come along and stand up to the bad guys and be able to toss cars around is the ultimate wish fulfillment of any kid. None of that is possible. It's all BS, OK? But for a kid, it's not. And you find out he's an orphan from a planet. So every kid who feels like an outsider identifies with him. You find out he's Clark Kent. The nerdiest person possible, actually on the inside, is really Superman. So let be an example to everyone. Don't judge a book by their cover. Inside all of us could be Superman. They come from real life, real personal spaces in those lives. It's the core DNA of the American people. Our world is no longer black and white. And our superheroes have come to reflect that.